The Brain Wall, a unique teaching aid. This is Dr. Jess Armine speaking. This slideshow will help you understand the neurotransmitters and their function, the relationship between parts of the brain and their function or dysfunction with the associated symptoms you would commonly see, and to help make you an informed and empowered patient. This is the brain wall. As you will note, different areas of the brain are color coordinated with their areas of function and dysfunction. There are sections for excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters, as well as an area to initiate the understanding of the concept of neuroendoimmunology. Neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are those chemicals that facilitate the transfer of information throughout the entire body via the nervous system. Neurotransmitters are divided into excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters are those chemicals that wake you up, allow you to focus, give you energy, and allow you to function throughout the day. Inhibitory neurotransmitters are those chemicals that help you calm down, relax, and sleep. On this slide, we see the excitatory neurotransmitters, epinephrine and norepinephrine, or adrenaline and noradrenaline, dopamine, glutamate, and phenylethylamine. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are excreted by the adrenal gland, otherwise known as your stress gland. And as you can see, if they're too high, you may have tr trouble sleeping, anxiety, tremors, anxiety or irritability and when they are low you might have fatigue difficulty in focusing weight gain low energy low motivation and low mood glutamate is a very toxic excitatory neurotransmitter and when it's very high you can experience cell death seizures or perhaps permanent brain damage phenylethylamine when it is low, you'll have low focus or low attention and symptoms of ADD, whereas if it's high, you might have sleep difficulty, your mind might be running, and you might have anxiety. Dopamine is your neurotransmitter of satiety. So when you have a nice meal and you have that satisfied feeling, that's dopamine. But when it's very low, you can have a type of depression called anhedonia, which is considered a lack of joy. When it's somewhat high, you can have symptoms of paranoia. And when it's very high, you can have symptoms of psychosis. When it's very high, there's a lot of damage going on in the brain. This also can cause autism and is somewhat involved in developmental delay and poor intestinal function. Inhibitory neurotransmitters. One of the most recognizable inhibitory neurotransmitters is serotonin. That's because of the medications that are considered antidepressants that are serotonin reuptake inhibitors. When serotonin is low, you can have anxiety, insomnia, sometimes depression, uncontrolled appetite, usually for sugars or carbohydrates, headaches and unexplained gastrointestinal symptoms. This is because the serotonin is the main neurotransmitter of the gastrointestinal tract. When serotonin is high, it can cause road rage, hot flashes, and irritability. It should be noted that the hot flashes that are experienced by perimenopausal and menopausal women may not be hormonally related, but serotonin related. 5-HIAA is the breakdown product of serotonin, and if it's high, often you'll see intestinal complaints. Taurine is an inhibitory neuromodulator, and when it's very low, you can get arrhythmias, panic attacks, cynicism, and sometimes pessimism. When it's high, you can have insomnia and hyperactivity. Of interest, if you look at the ingredients in the energy drinks that are out there, you'll find that taurine is the first ingredient. The reason that is present is not because 
they're trying to heal your brain, but because in high doses, taurine will act as an antiarrhythmic, protecting your heart. So on one hand, they're giving you substances that will upregulate your system and may cause heart problems. And on the other hand, they're attempting to protect your heart by giving you a high level of taurine. But then again, a high level of taurine may give you insomnia and hyperactivity. An interesting way of dealing with things, to be sure. Areas of the brain and their associated symptoms of function and dysfunction. The prefrontal cortex. ADD tends to live here. The function of the prefrontal cortex is attention, judgment, impulse control, empathy, critical thinking, and this area grows until age 25. A dysfunctioning prefrontal cortex will give you distractibility, impulsivity, poor judgment, laziness, tardiness, and everything that one calls a teenager. That is because the teenage brain has not fully developed its prefrontal cortex. The neurotransmitters that are active in this area are dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. The anterior cingulate. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and ODD, oppositional defiance disorder, tend to live here. The anterior cingulate is responsible for your flexibility and adaptability. Those people who are stubborn, hold grudges, have addictions, who are oppositional or argumentative, tend to have dysfunction in this area of the brain, and serotonin is the major neurotransmitter of this area. The basal ganglia. Anxiety lives in the basal ganglia. Left-sided and right-sided dysfunction have different expressions. Left-sided, you might have language problems. You may be verbally anxious. Right-sided dysfunction will cause internal anxiety, maybe suicidal thinking or self-mutilation. This is your brain's idol. This is how you stay in the moment. Dysfunctionally, anxiety, panic attacks, pessimism, conflict avoidance, very tense necks or shoulders, and tremors. GABA is the main neurotransmitter of this area. GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. This is an extremely important inhibitory neurotransmitter that was not mentioned elsewhere. GABA is the chief inhibitory neurotransmitter in the mammalian nervous system. And when you have enough of it, you can calm and sleep. When you don't have enough, you can have anxiety, insomnia, or tremors. Things that raise GABA in the body are substances like alcohol, benzodiazepines like Xanax, Clonopin, or Ativan, and marijuana. Those substances will stimulate or agonize the GABA-A receptor. The difficulty with the GABA-A receptor is that it's very much like the McDonald's off the highway, fast on, fast off. So when you stimulate the GABA-A receptor, you get a release of GABA, but it's very short-lived. Also, that's presuming you have enough GABA in your body. There are substances out there that will give your brain GABA, and they are things called phenylated GABA. It's important that you utilize phenylated GABA instead of the more common GABA because phenylated GABA will cross the blood-brain barrier. And this is a discussion for you and your clinician. The thalamic or limbic system, depression lives here. The thalamic limbic system is where you have your emotional filter, your charged emotions, your libido, your smell, your appetite, your sleep cycles. This is the area that colors your experiences so that when you have an experience and you assign a certain importance to it, this is where that's done. Also, this is why when you smell certain things, you relive certain emotions. When it's dysfunctional, there's depression, appetite, sleep problems, decreased sex drive, social isolation, increased negative thinking, Serotonin is the main neurotransmitter that runs this area. The base of the brain is considered the temporal lobe. The left side is the area that processes language, has short-term and long-term memory, auditory learning, and the right side is your facial recognition, decoding voice inflex inflections, gives you the ability to enjoy music. So the left side is more your 
executive and left brain kind of individual and the right side is more your artsy individual. A dysfunctional left temporal lobe area will give you aggression, fighting, sensitive to slights. This is also why children who have been abused tend to be aggressive because their abuser is generally right-handed and will consistently hit the child on the left side of the head causing temporal lobe injury that may be long lasting. And of course, right-sided temporal dysfunction will give you difficulty in decoding voices, social skills, and difficulty with facial recognition. This is also the area of memory, bipolar disorder, and psychosis. Memory may be just as simple as giving ginkgo biloba, uh, acetylcholine, or maybe some dopamine. Bi bipolar disorders are generally treated with anticonvulsants and GABAergic agents, and psychosis is generally treated with antipsychotic drugs. Neuroendoimmunology. This concept, originally promulgated by the Neuroscience Corporation, allows a clinician to understand the complex interaction between these three very important systems. Essentially, it works like this. The neurotransmitters excreted by the neural system are considered the neural system's biomarkers, and of course, the neural system has the receptors for same. The endocrine system excretes hormones, which are their biomarkers, and of course has the receptors for same. The immune system excretes cytokines, chemokines, and the like, and has the receptors for those biomarkers. It was discovered through scientific experimentation that each of these systems has the receptors for each other system's biomarkers. That means if there is a problem with the immune system from toxicity, food allergies, heavy metals, viruses, bacteria, etc., it's going to affect the hormonal system and the nervous system. And of course, vice versa. This is Dr. Jess Armine thanking you for your attention, and I hope that you have learned a lot about the neurological system the brain and its functions, and the functions of the neurotransmitters. And I hope this has helped you to become a more knowledgeable and empowered individual.